The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in this episode are that of the guest and host and do not necessarily reflect the values of sponsors or other associated organizations. Welcome to The Parental Compass by Family Education and Support Services. I am your host, Bobby Williams. Please subscribe to the show. We drop a new episode every week and we want to be sure that you know about it. So just hit that subscribe button. Whatever platform you're listening on, it has a subscribe. Problem. Mentors can make such a difference. Having someone that's been there before, that cares about you, it can be a total game changer. But how do you find these people? How do you know if you might be a good mentor yourself? Well, here to speak with me about it is actor, hip hop aficionado, and CEO of Mentor Washington, James Miles. You can learn more about Mentor Washington by going to mentorwashington.org. Among other things, they are an excellent resource tool to connecting mentees with quality mentors. It was a really interesting conversation. Let's check it out. My background as a, as a mentor started, oh, probably many years ago when I was an actor and mentored by another actor uh, called, his name was Dougie Doug. Um, so that was my first, first acting job was in the 1994, I think. And I was playing a, a high school freshman. I wasn't in a high school, <laughs> but that's the, that's the funniest part. I've been playing a teenager for almost 20 years. Uh. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I played a high school freshman called Todd Freshman and Dougie Doug was my guardian angel that kind of guided me through high school, taught me the ropes. Uh, it was for BET, Queen Latifah, L O Cool J, Dougie Doug, and myself. And it was a really cool thing. But throughout the entire process, Dougie Doug was like, yo, you got to do what you got to do. Hand yourself, know your business, know your worth, uh, uh, study, uh, make sure you, you know your beats. He really brought, in, brought to me like the importance of being an actor and how it wasn't just something fun, but it was a business. And then, of course, being a Black actor at that. So that kind of, you know, he was just a bit older than me. That kind of peer-to-peer mentoring kept me going through many, many years until I eventually left acting and became a full-time middle school teacher and high school teacher, uh, or then high school teacher. Um, So I want to jump in about uh, Doug Doug real quick. So are you saying he like played sort of a mentor figure in the yes. production and he became like a real mentor to you? Yes, yes, that's true. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was cr- kind of crazy that that happened. You know, yeah. I kind of lucked out having having my first acting job with, with, with Dougie Doug. Yeah. <laughs> nice. What do you think compelled him to take you under his wing? I think he just saw, uh, you know, uh, another young black actor that was trying to make his his footprint in in the acting world and you know it he just was like i gotta do just giving back you know or passing it forward i should say so you know when i became an actor and worked with younger actors uh particularly those are you know that have been marginalized queer actors young actors of color actors with disabilities i always was like all right let me let me school you the way i was schooled uh and and what you need to do and try to take you under my my wing so I think it's just that the element of, of passing it forward, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, and it's one thing to know like the fun side of something, but then to know the discipline side. Yes. It's like, that's the difference maker in life often. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that's key. That's key, that building resilience, understanding uh, like what circumstances mean for you as an individual, and then on a global perspective, all that's key in, in mentoring. And that's what the, the purpose of mentors do, you know? Yeah. So for sure. Yeah. So then you go into teaching middle school. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Taught middle school. Uh, first, I was, I was hired as an uh, after school high school coordinator for uh, this, this program in, in Bushwick, Brooklyn. 
And part of the program was using hip hop to help these young, young high school students pass their uh, regents exam, which is like the SBAC here, their standardized exams. Um, and I saw that at high school, some of the youth that we were serving, if they had had this kind of introduction at an earlier age, this wouldn't be an issue in terms of passing the tests, uh, academics. Uh, it, they just needed some, some more support earlier. So I developed this middle school model while I was teaching in middle school because I got transferred to a middle school to use hip hop music, art integration, youth culture as a way to engage and inform young minds and young learners um, and wrote, wrote a book, uh, produced several, several songs, uh, actually an album with uh, Jadena, uh, artist Jadena did maybe 20 tracks. Uh, Talib Kweli did a track, Sadat X did a track. Nice. Uh, my, my friends at Soul Science Lab did a track, did several tracks. Siobhan was on a, a couple songs. Like we really brought in the ethos of hip hop and hip hop educators, uh, hip hop artists and hip hop educators into this. That now that program and songs are used around the world. And that kind of presented me on a pathway to where I am today. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so often, especially with education, it's like, is it yeah. engaging? Like, right. If it's not engaging, it's not going to be interesting. And so that's incredible how you've been able to like pair that with hip hop and make that whole thing happen and getting all those artist oh, tracks too. That's huge. Yeah, that was that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, currently, I'm working with uh, with Wordsworth, uh, J. Rawls, uh, both of whom are on the Black Star album. Um, Jay Rawls produced uh, one of my favorite favorite tracks, um, "Brown Girl." Uh, Wordsworth was an MC, founded the Lyricist Lounge, and John Robinson, uh, who is was in Science of Life and was also in Lyricist Lounge, an accomplished MC. So we're all working together now on like, uh, I guess, leveling up what we did just several years ago in 2015, 16, and 17. That's so dope. Well, yeah. let's circle it back to. To straight mentorship. What are the qualities yeah. that make a good mentor? You think are there? Uh, I mean, you see hundreds and hundreds of mentors. Are there any defining things where it's like this is a good mentor? I think a mentor has to be a good listener, uh, and a good mentor has to be a patient, caring, loving human being. Uh, if you have those qualities, um, with the ability to to have young people think critically. You know, when I say think critically, I mean, just ask questions. So if you have those qualities of listening, asking questions, not trying to solve, but more so just guide, those are the great qualities of a mentor. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. It, all, it almost <laughs> sounds like a good therapist, like a good therapist isn't like, this is your problem. They sort of guide you to yes. your own answer. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Just by asking questions, mm -hmm. you know, there's a documentary called The Kid from Coney Island about Stefan Marbury. Um, and not to, you know, spoiler alert, I'm just going to tell you what happens. <laughs> but, uh, he's, a, he's in the barbershop talking to a young, young man. And this young man says, oh, man, you're, you're Starberry. I want to be like you. I want to I be a basketball player. And, you know, Stefan's like, yo, you can do whatever you want, man. You can be the president. Right. And this kid looks at him for like a good 60 seconds and says, no one ever told me that. And he's like, I could be the president. And that shift in that young person's mind, just this, the, the idea, representation, someone presented him with something. He didn't say, be the president. He just said, hey, it's an option for you. Open up the pathways of that young person's mind that are, you know, indefinable, man. It was, it was that, that inspired me to become a better mentor myself. Just that little conversation in the barbershop of the documentary. <laughs> That's incredible. I, yeah. I know there's a lot of families listening that are like, well, I want good mentors for my children, but yes. how do I go about finding them in the first place? Yes, great question. Uh, we have something on our website, mentorwashington.org called the Mentor Connector. And you just click on like, find a program, find a mentor, find a mentee. Just go there and you can do it by zip code, you know, up to a five mile, 10 mile, 25 mile radius. And you'll be able to find a mentor that way. Mentorwashington.org, uh, go to the mentor connector under programs. 
Nice. What about if you're in a community that is outside of Washington? Outside of Washington? Yeah. You know, because Mentor Washington is one of 25 affiliates across the United States, uh, that Mentor Connector is national, actually international, because we have an affiliate in Canada. So, yeah, you can just go to the website and say, you know, maybe you're in, in California or Oregon uh, or Idaho. You're like, hey, how do I find a mentor close to me? Mentor Connector. That's awesome. That's incredible yeah. that a resource is out there like that. Oh um, yeah, thank you. I coordinate like a lot of mentors through my work with the Bridge Music Project. And sometimes I'll find that people, I, I'm almost a, a gatekeeper or I am a right. gatekeeper right. a lot of times with access to youth and I work with a lot of vulnerable youth. Are, yeah. are there any questions you should ask yourself when considering to be in a mentor role? Yeah, I think the first question is, why do I want to do this? Mm. You know, if if your desire is to, you know, be a, the savior to some young person, you're in the wrong business. <laughs> you know, no one needs a savior. Um, what, what young people need is a, a caring adult and a shoulder, uh, someone to just talk to. So one, why are you doing it? And then two, um, how do I relate to people that may not be like me? You know, um, and that can be down to the very general, like gender or race or socioeconomic status, or it could be down to the, the, the political, like, you know, can I mentor someone with different religious beliefs than myself or political affiliation than myself or from a, if I'm from an urban setting, can I mentor someone in a rural back from a rural background um, and not to, to judge, but to say, like, you know, maybe I do. I don't understand what it's like to be, uh, for, for, for the sake of for a conversation, you know, I don't know what it's like to be a Christian if I'm Muslim or a Muslim if I'm Christian. Um, I don't know what it's like to be a girl. That's not a judgment thing. Just like there's things you may not know, but are you willing to learn and listen and ask questions and really not investigate, but really uh, involve yourself in a young person's life? Then, and do you have time, right? And consistently, time because there's worse the, their studies show that a, student, a young person's worse off if they are promised a mentor a mentor shows up and then disappears from their life than if they just never had a mentor at all so if you're going to do it be consistent show up um not have to be forever but at least you have to make that 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 promise i will be with you for six months one year six weeks uh, but just make sure you're present and consistent with your with your a relationship. Um, and if you could do all that, then, you know, call your, you know, go to the website, <laughs> look for an organization that's, that's seeking a mentor, which all of them are. Um, mm -hmm. And just say, hey, I'd like to sign up to be a mentor and boom. Yeah. Well, yeah, consistency is so key. And I feel like yes. the way that you show caring is with your time, especially right. as an adult, because often your time is so limited. So to put in time really means something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I gotta put in that work, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what about, we always talk about mentors, but what about mentees? Are there any qualities that make a good mentee or? I think a, a good mentee is a mentee that always wants to learn, you know, and mentee has no age. You know, I've, I've, I'm myself and mentored by, by colleagues of mine. Like, hey, what do I do here? You know, that desire to to learn, to ask questions, um, to the willingness to maybe even change. Uh, that's that's key qualities from for a mentee as well. You know, yeah, um, that desire to learn and grow. Yeah. Well, and you bring up a good point that like as an adult, I still have mentors, but it's mm -hmm. not like I, you know, go up to someone and ask, will you be my mentor? It's right. kind of like asking, like, will you be my friend? You know, it's it's like <laughs> you get more into organic relationships and figure out who you connect with and people just sort yeah. of end up being your mentors, too. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes you just sort of find who you connect with and who has knowledge and, yeah, you know, be intentional about who you're spending time and energy around. So who are other people that have had a big impact on you and how did you connect with those people? Uh, one is, you know, both my parents, 
Um, so that was by birth. I connected with them by birth. Um, but they've uh-huh. had a huge, huge influence on, on my life. I would even say my younger brother, uh, even though he's six years of my junior, just watching him grow and matriculate through life has been inspirational. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a writer for a TV show. So I'm just like, super excited to watch his career uh, and his, you know, my niece. My niece will be two next month. Watch all this blossom. Um, in terms of outside of my family, uh, I would say there's a there's a, one of the first teaching artists I met, uh, also a, a black artist, uh, black man, actor, theater writer, uh, practitioner. Michael Wiggins was a huge influence on me and a mentor in my life, guided me uh, when I started started working as an as an artist that teaches. Um, Michael J. Fox uh, really inspired me to to quit acting. Funny funny enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and follow my passion in education. Um, and that was, uh, I would say, Michael J. Fox and Wendell Pierce, who were on the show together. Uh, both, those, both those individuals uh, meant a lot to me. Uh, let's see. Oh, man, there's so many. Courtney Body, uh, Lindsay Maliakel, those two individuals I met at the New Victory Theater. Uh, I wouldn't be here today without, without either one of them. Um, yeah, I would say that that and then just young people, young people every day inspire me and mentor me, uh, my children included. What's cool? What's not cool? What's what? Mm, yeah. What is the, <laughs> right? What should be should we be talking about? What should we be thinking about in 2022 and 2023? So I always will go back to young people as my mentor. Well, and mentoring can be almost a two way street in a way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I learned so much from my kids, I'll tell you that, and their friends, even as much as they clown me and make fun of me uh, for being, you, dad, you're not the cool dad, you're just dad. Um, I, they, they, mean that, they, they guide me, man, for sure. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, it's like so much of society is so youth oriented and it's like, be yes. cool. And it's, I don't know, I'm done <laughs> trying to worry about being cool for sure. Yeah, yeah, I, those days are, are, are behind me. Yeah. Well, this was a fascinating conversation. We're just kind of skimming the surface here. But do yeah. you have any closing thoughts or ideas you want to leave the audience with? Yes. Listen to listen to young people. You know, at the front of every revolution in our history, there's always been a young person. There's a reason behind that. They are, are not empty vessels that need to be filled. They are have a font of knowledge that we can access, utilize, collaborate with. Um, and not just use them as some some talking point, but work work and listen with young people. That's my advice. I will always I'll always go back to to listening to youth. Nice. Well, James, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Bobby. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, James Miles. You're an inspiration. You're doing some real incredible work. This has been the Parental Compass by Family Education and Support Services. I'm your host, Bobby Williams. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Peace.